suffering. All right. Hey, there we go. We made it. We made it back on the TV. Oh, I, I shouldn't say the TV screen. We are on the computer screen once again. Yeah. We're live once again back on the Biddy Mac Show. Hooray! Yay! So welcome everyone to the Biddy Mac Show. Kay Lazarus yeah. once again is here. And special I, guest star. Special guest star. Not that special. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, I, Vinnie Mac, once again on the computer screen. And we're going to talk about more nonsense than any human being can talk about. So and I'm, and I am, I'm a font. Yeah. Of that. <laughs> I'm, the, <laughs> I'm the keynote speaker of the, the nonsense convention. <laughs> It, you know, it, it's almost like uh, it, it's almost like uh, Gerardo Rivera, except we make sense. <laughs> Gerardo, yeah. yeah. Except yeah. we we never had to open that. That remember that they had to open that vault of, yes, of uh, yes. Al Capone and yes, and there was there was nothing there. There was nothing there. <laughs> it was nothing there except for his sad pride. <laughs> there was a uh, he did you know before he he got his own show. Where, remember he famously broke his nose on mm -hmm. on that show. In a, in, a, in a fight between neo Nazis and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and I think civil rights leaders. It was kind of a cool show. And yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I remember the first thing that launched him. He was fired from 2020. And then he, uh -huh. then he, he was actually just offered this thing. You want to host this opening of, 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 uh, of, um, of uh, Al Capone's vault? And they thought they'd see a lot of stuff oh, like yeah, pegs yeah, and yeah, money yeah. and gold and something. They found nothing. There was nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> all desserts. So then he did a show after that that there was more of a payoff for it. It was all about drugs, and oh. uh, it was all about narcotics in America and everything. This is back in the mid 1980s, and I remember there was this young guy who wanted the legalization of marijuana, yeah. and then there was this older guy, I think it was with the NAACP, who didn't who thought drugs were a terrible thing, mm -hmm. and uh, and didn't want them legalized. It was messing up the neighborhood. So mm -hmm. I remember the guy said, you know. If we legalize drugs like marijuana, it'll put the gangsters out of business. You know, Al Capone did not want to see the end of prohibition. He 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 wanted it to keep going. He had nothing when prohibition was over. And then they showed out. Uh, they showed uh, Geraldo. He goes, "Tell me about it." <laughs> I know firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Gerardo. Poor Gerardo. See, I could have told him there was nothing in that vault, but no, he, he would have listened to me. But hey, look, we're glad that you are here, and mm -hmm. we will give you more information than the whatever show that uh, Meet the Press with Chuck Todd. <laughs> Chuck, meet the, remember that guy who used to do Meet the Press from Buffalo? He was really yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, he was. He was he always was. talking about the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Yes. And then he died suddenly, that guy. Yeah, he was a heavy guy. And he was guy. really good. I forget his name. But I, I uh, Meet the Press was the, that was a show that's always been around. Yes. Since like 1950. Yes. It's still going on, Meet the Press. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and if you watch the old Meet the Press, like the old, um, uh, like the Mindrick, not the Mindrick, what's that, Kinescope that was from the 50s. Uh -huh. the, 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 you see these guys and they, and they look really uh, old. Yeah. These politicians or these reporters and all. Mm -hmm. And they... And you find that there are only like about 38 <laughs> or 43. <laughs> they lived to 55 or so. Oh, my and, goodness. And I was always wondering, whenever you saw those videos, why uh -huh. those people look so old. And the reason why they look so old is because those days, it, was, it wasn't a TV medium. Mm -hmm. Reporters were all wrote for newspapers and stuff. And they were all, you know, stay up late. Drink, eat lots of meat and potatoes. Ooh, eat, wow. um, never exercise. Oh, uh, uh, drink whiskey what? all the time. Smoke cigarettes or smoke oh, cigars. Smoking, so that's yeah. why they. There was no, yeah. That's why they look so old. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking was a big thing back then in them times and days. That's when you could advertise it on TV and billboards mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything, radio. But that's back then. This is today, where you can now advertise blunts and CBDs yeah. <laughs> and all that Whatever. type of stuff. Well, I'm, I'm surprised they actually have now, you, on the not so much on the regular channels, but on the cable channels, they mm -hmm. actually have whiskey ads and vodka oh, ads yeah, and stuff. You yeah, never yeah, used to see yeah. that. They have to be out after 10 o'clock. Yes. But sooner or later, 
they're going to move them to like Saturday morning children's. Yeah. Children. <laughs> if the money is right, they'll leave it there. So they also advertise the lottery a lot. Yes, yes, they do. They advertise the lottery a lot. The, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the two lottery games that we got, uh, Mega Millions yes. and Powerball. I was almost going to call it big money. It's like <laughs> big money lottery is like, what, what, what company is that? <laughs> big money. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, I, you know, uh, I thought I was always surprised it goes up to like a hundred million or a hundred, mm -hmm. the Powerball and stuff and 200 yeah. million. Uh, it kind of goes up really like 500 million. Yes. Um, and, and nobody wins. And nobody wins. Up until that time. And then everyone's yeah. buying tickets at that point. You think someone's going to win. And then, mm -hmm. and then, when someone wins, it's usually a group of people. I mean, like, mm -hmm. like uh, several people that time came up with the yes. numbers as well yes. to share the, the big money. Yeah. Know? And as a matter of fact, at the time of taping, um, Mega Millions was at $750 million. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And Powerball, I think, is at $500 million. Yeah. So I've already got all my tickets. Yeah. And the clerk said, none of them are winners. <laughs> I, knew, I once met a guy that had seven hundred fifty million dollars, and he was no happier than a guy with five hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> he, the, the, uh, the the lottery. Okay, so so you know yeah. what happens is I I uh, there's all these numbers, and then there's a special number. They've yes. changed it all, mm -hmm. and and there was. Now there's six numbers and then a seventh yeah, number. Yeah, six numbers and your golden number, whatever. Yeah, and okay. and but you have to get all of them to yeah. win the big money. Mm -hmm. And and what happens was I remember that you would uh, you, so so the week will go by and like five hundred million, no one yeah. would win. Right. So it goes up to six hundred or seven hundred million right. at that point. And and then uh, somebody said, uh, why didn't somebody win? Don't they? Didn't somebody win? And then they said. Believe it or not, no matter how many people uh, enter the lottery, no mm -hmm. matter how much money it is, yeah. if they, the numbers you pick don't turn up, they just don't turn <laughs> up. <laughs> if nobody picked them, you know. I said, oh, yeah, it gets a little harder than you think. Yeah, it is. <laughs> to get seven, yeah. yeah. Seven numbers. Uh, some people think it's a, a scam, the lottery code, who knows. But um, what's funny is I always wanted to check out the England lottery. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do it, but the UK lottery has some sort of weird system, and it's five or six numbers, and I think somebody wins almost every month. Yeah, yeah. Well, before there was before lottery took over in America, we were like had that gambling fever here. <laughs> uh, they uh, they had uh, what was called the Irish sweepstakes. Ah, and yes. people, because my family is from Ireland, they said, you want us to buy you a ticket in those Irish sweepstakes? I said, sure. How much is it? They said, like, a dollar. A dollar? I don't have a dollar. <laughs> I'm six years old. I don't have a dollar. <laughs> I'm going to spend it on something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I never won it. Yeah, I never, oh, sadly. I never won, yeah. oh, <laughs> I never won the Irish sweepstakes. Uh, what do you know about Irish sweepstakes? Well, you win, uh, well, you win money. Mm -hmm. And that money you could use, you'll take the trip to Ireland to, to claim. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have some soda bread and some Guinness. <laughs> and some boiled potatoes. Boiled potatoes, <laughs> and I will have some corned beef and ham. Yes. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, and with that, and if I win enough money, I'll get. I'll, I want fried leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a skewer. <laughs> now. Uh, <laughs> Oh. Now, now, also, uh, uh, so, so uh, there would be the, the Irish sweepstakes, yes. and that was, and then, uh, you know, then it started to take out a world of its own in America, mm -hmm. the lottery. The lottery uh, every, yeah. It was every state had it, and uh, so every state had a, uh, uh, not every state in America, it had, it had, and then I think for the longest time, Virginia had mm -hmm. one, but North Carolina didn't. Yeah. And thus, yes. And thus, we like I said about Geraldo, that we did not want North Carolina to get their lottery because we like the money going over the border. <laughs> Spend it on our lottery. They claim uh -huh. that the lottery is good for uh it's supposed to help the, the economy. Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to help the, the school system, yeah. buy textbooks for poor people uh -huh. and stuff. But that's a, that's a really 
don't know where the money goes. The, 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 the taxes still keep going up. Yep, yep. It goes right into their pockets. That's where it goes. They're the ones winning the lottery. It's the lottery officials. I don't really know. Well, they don't seem to. They must hide it because they seem they still wear the same old brown suits and <laughs> drive the same old four tours. And... <laughs> don't, don't let that fool you. That was baseball. Yes, they knew that that the gam people were. They, they, they didn't, I think even though the Chicago Black Sox, they mm-hmm. don't talk about it. Yes, before, but they yes. Were, I saw in the uh, baseball uh, mini series that that there would be like in their early days the Cincinnati Red Stockings mm-hmm. or, or these teams. They the guy would uh, the best player on the team would drop a ball and lose the game, and they'd say, "Oh well, well we lost." And the next day you'd see him with a diamond stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> Did he really drop that ball? On yeah, did he really <laughs> drop it by yeah. accident? <laughs> well, a lot of cheating in baseball yeah. sometimes. But um, I remember when I was um, a kid, the Maryland Lottery had a game show. It was pretty cool. I loved yeah. it. And the music they would play and all that type of stuff. But have you ever heard of Illinois Instant Riches? The, the lottery game? That's a, not another lottery game show. Awesome. I mean, I love it because it's by Mark Goodson, who's oh, yeah. the same producer of The Price is Right. That's right. And the guy who was the host, I don't know, his name is also, I think, Mark Goodson. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what, what his name was, but it was an awesome Mark game. Mark Goodson Jr. Yeah, Mark Goodson Jr. <laughs> he, uh, I, I know that uh, I was always rather suspect of lotteries lotteries a lot mm-hmm. like gambling in a casino if you keep yeah. if the, even if you win ten dollars or twenty or even a hundred dollars mm-hmm. they expect you to s- keep buying tickets and oh, keep buying, and yes. they know that sooner or later if you, you do it long yeah. enough you're gonna lose all you're gonna money. lose it all yeah so uh and, and <laughs> casinos are that way too oh yeah and uh i remember uh, in fact uh, virginia has a famous lottery that was actually fixed by the australians remember that uh no. Okay, the it was actually uh it actually was on I think Ripley's Believe It or Not. They act, I mean I knew it when it happened, but then uh-huh. like maybe two years later they did it on Ripley's Believe It or Not, where uh-huh. where uh there was a, a lottery on Wednesday and a lottery on Saturday, and it went up pretty high to maybe you know locally like twenty million dollars, which is mm-hmm. a lot for a state lottery, mm-hmm. and it went up to yeah. from like five million to twenty million. And they were waiting. They were just waiting and waiting and waiting. And then when nobody won it, and it went up immediately, like the twenty million. Yeah. They just, they just, the 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 people in place just bought ticket after ticket after ticket after ticket, uh, in uh, like uh, convenience stores and stuff. Hmm. They couldn't buy all of them. Okay. But, but they bought as many as they could in those like uh, seventy-two. What's seventy-two and twenty-four? Ninety-six hours. Between yeah. the lotteries, uh-huh. and in fact, when they closed it, they said, "We still want to buy more. We still want to buy more." And they did, and they still bought like out of like uh, they uh-huh. still I don't know how many they bought, but something like three million tickets, what? and for a dollar each or okay. something. But the winner would get twenty million. So as soon as the balls were dropped and the number came up, uh-huh. they basically took the boxes and had you know accounts uh-huh. just look at each one <laughs> and look, they found one. But uh, and then they did win the twenty million. Yes. And then that's when they realized it was fixed. And it it wasn't uh, illegal what they did. It was just right. kind of, you know, it wasn't. It, they said it wasn't really that great an idea because mm-hmm. you don't get the twenty million all of a sudden. And they still the whole thing. I think thing cost them like three or four million to put out. And it's and <laughs> and if you got a cash buyout, then you got maybe seven million or something. Instead mm-hmm. of twenty million, yeah, I don't know how it worked out, million. but yeah. but they had to. Uh, I don't know what really happened, but what was kind of funny about it personally <laughs> was uh, nobody bought tickets because every time you went to the convenience <laughs> store, they were <laughs> there was someone there buying the tickets. <laughs> another one, another one, another one, another one, another. Every conceivable number, not every conceivable because they, they there was I, I don't I, there might have been like twenty more than twenty million permutations or something. Uh-huh. And they never got that far. They only got like half that much right. because they were. Buying it around the clock in the middle of the night, everything. <laughs> and the guy who I forget his name, but he was a very nice guy. Yeah. I met him on a movie set. He was an actor. Oh. And uh, but I mean, he was the guy who did the balls that day. Oh, okay. Okay. So sometimes uh, um, uh, uh, 
the guy, the local guy from Richmond, or the, the CBS yeah, morning, yeah, CB, uh, the radio uh, guy. Yeah. Be Bevins? Bevins, yeah. Bill Bevins Bill sometimes Bevins. does it. Yeah. And then uh, he said, oh, he still does it. And then, but this one guy was, was a guy I knew. Uh -huh. And then every time they showed it on the national news, they showed this guy. <laughs> doing that. And I said, and then I, I, you know, was on a movie set with him. I'm like, is you're the guy that's famous 15 minutes. You, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was all over the place. Uh, doing that, uh, doing that. Uh, he's on all the news shows, you know. Not that interview, just they just showed it. Uh, well, just showed yeah. through the ball. <laughs> Walter Cronkite, whoever was talking, on, uh, John Chance, whatever was popular, Peter Jennings was just like, talking over while he was as well doing the report. Yeah. See, though, now this would be really funny if that whole entire Australian group bought three million dollars for the ticket. Yeah. The balls are dropped. Then all of a sudden, they look at all their tickets and they didn't win. Well, no, uh, that. That was a possibility. Yeah. That really was a possibility. <laughs> it's just by they bought enough of them that yeah. probably would turn up, but there was they didn't get all the numbers because they didn't have enough time. <laughs> and we're talking not enough time all the time in the day. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> over over, over day. Yeah, yeah, over right. four days. Yeah. Oh, it, from, my yeah from, it was Saturday lottery and I think Wednesday it was. It was the fix was in. Uh, <laughs> it was an Australian uh, group. Yeah. Well, congratulations to that group, I guess. <laughs> but, well, so many people invested, in, you know, like twenty thousand or thirty thousand oh, yes. or something, and it all got to be a, a several million. So all those mm -hmm. people got a share of it. But I don't think once you put twenty thousand and share it, it's not all that really much. Not all that much. It's probably one ten thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Hooray! I won. An extra ten thousand dollars for what you put yeah. in. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. I won grocery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's but, ten thousand. Well, well, yeah, but the thing is, if somebody wins this lottery, then somebody's going to be really happy. But you're probably right. It's going to be a group. Yeah, it's got to be because there's so many people buying tickets out there. Yeah. But you know, I went to a spot in Virginia. I think it's towards Charlottesville. Yeah. You know, they see the lottery signs. I saw this one sign. It was a little bit of a mistake. Mm -hmm. It says. You know, seven hundred fifty million right on the bottom. This sign said seven hundred and fifty billion dollars. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm ready to play that lottery. Yeah. <laughs> That's more I don't think anything is seven hundred and fifty billion. More, you know, the government might have a trillion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> But 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 that's the government, and we're talking yeah, about everyone that, in the country. Yeah, everyone in the country. But the, yes. uh, but, but uh, no, I think how much is uh, I think uh, Apple is probably the most, and they're worth about a hundred or two hundred billion. Yeah, and that's and that's a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is. Yeah. So, but that was funny to see that sign. Seven hundred fifty billion dollars. Everybody should play the lottery. You know how much a billion is? It's a thousand millions. millions. Yeah. yeah. A thousand million and. Yeah. And I, uh, I, I'll tell you something about a billion in a moment, but uh, if you probably heard the story that if you have a million dollars, yes, you could spend a thousand dollars a day for three years before it runs out. Wow. But if you have a billion dollars, you could spend a thousand dollars a day for three thousand. Golly! <laughs> you some idea how much you know. So if you didn't spend a thousand dollars a day, you could spend two thousand. Oh my goodness! That's so a lot of money. And, and there is, a, and we're talking about billionaires. There's about a little less than two hundred billionaires in America, which is actually uh -huh. more than we know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was a time when there was only like maybe less than ten. Yeah. When uh, uh, there were the days of Rockefeller, yes. and J. Paul Getty, Jay Paul and, and Vanderbilt. But those, Vanderbilt, but those guys were actually richer than probably uh, like Bill Gates or or mm -hmm. Bezos today. For the because of the economy, mm -hmm. they what you have to figure out is not so much how what how, the numerical amount of money it is, uh -huh. but you have to figure out how much of the gross national product is your worth compared to the rest of the country. Yeah, that's true. And they and I think uh, uh, in the case that I think they did this with when Bill Gates was the uh, richest man, they figured out that his worth of like a hundred billion compared uh -huh. to I think. Uh, Rockefeller's uh, the old man's uh, worth of like uh, two and a half billion. Mm -hmm. Two and a half billion in the depression was worth more than a hundred billion today. Right now. <laughs> and it was worth two or three percent of the gross national product, which a hundred billion is, is just a drop in the bucket Ooh. compared to the, all the money that's out there today. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good stuff. But yeah, I, 
You have to give it to them old cats back in them days. They they had some money. I can tell you, they had some money. But anyway, but you it, know, a, a billionaire. Yeah. Uh, once people know you're a billionaire, especially your kids, mm -hmm. then you're then you're in danger. Yes. Uh, no. And not only, I mean, you might be in lethal danger because they, you know, they might want to kill you for your money. Yeah. Your kids <laughs> want to inherit it, you know. <laughs> but they also, uh, or your wife, your fourth wife, or something. <laughs> But uh, but uh, but you uh, but also uh, in, in a more uh, I have to be philosophical about this. A very rich man, a very poor man, has it over a rich man because a very poor man knows who his friends are, and a very rich man is never sure. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That is right. Yeah, you never know. That. I mean, if you're poor. And a woman falls in love with you and wants to marry you, then you know it's because she loves you. That's but right. If you're a billionaire and she falls in love with you, is she really the one? <laughs> is she pretending to like me? Yes. Because I'm a billionaire? Because I'm a billionaire for my money. Uh, you know the old joke a woman, uh, uh, old man uh, told the young woman, says, You're only pretending to like me because I'm a billionaire. And she goes, Do you think because you're a billionaire I have to pretend to like you? <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> well, you know that kind of reminds me of uh, the movie Bruce's Million. Oh yeah, and that's yeah, that was a great movie. There's a uh, that's a few. There's a few versions of that, and mm -hmm. and the, the, of course the one with Richard Pryor is very good. But the one there was one with Rochester from uh, from the Jack Benny show. Oh yeah, Eddie Anderson, yes. and it's and it was uh, back in the '40s, I think, and it was a million dollars they had to spend. But when they made the uh, one with uh, with Richard Pryor was thirty million. Thirty million. They had, they had to uh, boost it up. Yeah. Uh, thirty million dollars you must spend in thirty days. No assets. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> well, it's very hard to because it, um, you. I mean, they figured out every everything in the movie. You know, uh, run run for office. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, take everyone out to to lunch, lunch. and fancy you know, fancy dinner. <laughs> uh, buy a ball team, and and you know, ball teams are famous for not making money. Yeah. Um, for, for the owners, uh, you know, you think of these guys who run uh, ball teams like mm -hmm. like George Steinbrenner and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're all like made their money doing other things. Yeah, shipping yeah. magnate. He was yeah. sh George Rosario was shipping magnate from Cleveland. He wasn't even a New Yorker. I know he was from Cleveland. But at the same time, uh, when they own a team, they are uh, they're basically just a plaything, a toy, yeah, a toy to yeah. invite their friends. And also, yeah. they get to throw their yeah. weight around that they <laughs> know something about sports. Well, they actually, none of these guys know anything about sports. No. <laughs> no, not really. It's like, oh, I own a ball team. Hey, come, come over here and see me. Well, you make all you get all your friends to you know the sky boxes and everything. <laughs> I mean that is pretty exciting. You know? yeah. And then you go with the you know if your team wins a championship, you're in the locker room, oh, heck kind yeah. of holding up the the uh, you know. But at the same time, um, the yeah the uh, I, the most famous owner I, I think of was um, Ted Turner was the uh, I guess oh, he's still yes. the owner of the Atlanta Braves. Atlanta and what Braves, happened was yeah. he didn't they didn't like the way the team was going, so he mm -hmm. fired the manager and became the manager for the yeah. day. Yeah, and he was he was clueless. And they said, <laughs> "How do you know he was clueless?" Uh, he said, "Anyone could be a manager." So when he put on his uniform in the dugout mm -hmm. or in the you know in the locker room before he went in the dugout, he had his socks on over the over the pants rather than <laughs> under the pants or the stockings. I mean, he did something that, and then all the other players just shook their heads. <laughs> after the first, the only game he after the only game he mm -hmm. he managed. The league came in and said it's a conflict of interest, the owner and the, and yes. I cannot be the manager. You can hire a manager, yes, but you know you can't. <laughs> you can't be the manager. Yeah. Oh golly, well, Ted Turner. Boy, I tell you what, a screw up sometimes. Yeah. Oh my. Well, goodness. you know the famous story about owners of teams, especially baseball, was uh, George Will said mm -hmm. that during the strike, one of the many strikes in baseball, he mm -hmm. said, uh, "Don't think of these twenty-eight owners of the teams as being like these shrewd sports businessmen or shrewd sports minded uh, geniuses. If you think of them as 28 feudal lords, you get a better idea how they run <laughs> Major League Baseball. In oh, fact, yeah. in fact, it was against the rules to pick uh -huh. one of the owners as the commissioner of baseball. 
And so yep. interim, they picked B Bud Selig, uh -huh. uh, who was the owner of the Brewers. Yeah. And then um, I, I guess he was doing a good enough job. And they said, well, are, 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 they, are we going to replace him? And they said, no, nah, he's doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but the rules say an owner can't be the right. owner. We'll change the rules. Oh, see, that's we're the we're owners. We don't need us. We don't have to answer anybody. Baseball. <laughs> we don't have to answer anybody. Oh. He was there a long time, 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> I'd say they should have kicked him off first year. But, uh, well, I, I, evidently they were happy with his job. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Who's the commissioner now? Uh, Fred Matt. No. Fred Maffer? Yeah. I think. I used to know all oh. of them. So was, I actually met one of them, Bowie Kuhn. Bowie Kuhn, yeah. And I, he was, uh, but I met him after he was the commissioner. Uh-huh. No, maybe he was still the commissioner. And then I, uh, I remember uh, 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 Peter Uberoff. Uh, the yes. famous one was Landis. Landis. Uh, uh, the, Mountain Landis. Yeah, Kenneshaw Mountain Landis. Yeah, he was a judge Landis. for like Woodrow, like Teddy Roosevelt. He was, yeah. he was an old guy when they picked him. He yeah. was there for like. 20 years after that. <laughs> and then I, uh, and I met the son of a commissioner. I met Paul Giamatti and made a movie with him. Oh, uh, yes, that's <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. And yeah. his, his father was the uh, commissioner of baseball after Faye Vincent, I think. Yes. Yeah. And Faye no, Vincent... Faye Vincent, who was after P Peter Uberoff, I think. Okay. Or I don't know, maybe there was someone between that. And then Faye Vincent, he died yeah, suddenly. Yeah, he died, yes. Faye Vincent took over. And um, what happened was uh, uh, Bart Giamatti, who used to be the president of Yale, was the, um, if I remember right, he he was um, the president of the National League. Mm -hmm. And then when the Red Sox blew the World Series against the Mets, he <laughs> was outraged. And then we find out that he was hardly the, a cheerleader for the National League because he, he was still a Boston Red Sox fan. <laughs> So then, but but that evidently he was doing a good enough job, and then he became the uh, commissioner of baseball. He was elevated to commissioner of baseball, and then mm -hmm. he he went through a rough time when uh, with Pete Rose. Do we throw him out? Oh, Do we yes. go? And then he decided we he's not in baseball anymore. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, he died suddenly of a heart attack. So yeah. every time they interview. The son, the actor, Paul Giamatti, they'd mm -hmm. always ask him, do you blame Pete Rose for indirectly killing your father? Oh. Goes, no, I blame cigarettes <laughs> two or three packs a day for killing my father. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Did Paul sue the tobacco company for doing that? Mm, well, I, I'm not so sure. It's very hard to sue the tobacco. It was always hard to sue the tobacco company. Mm -hmm. But now it's, I don't think you can do it at all because right. now, I tell you what's weird about tobacco, uh, about cigarettes, was in the 1964 they put the Surgeon General, you know, yeah. uh, warning, mm -hmm. and they, you know, didn't like that at all. Yeah. But then, when lawsuits came, they're, you know, they have these lawyers. They got they talk about dream teams. Oh, they had the greatest dream teams. These law, uh, and because they had lots of money, they they still do the tobacco industry. <laughs> they had all these people, mm -hmm. and they would say, um, "Hey." There's a warning on there. We mm. told the people yeah. not to smoke, and they smoke, so and we're not smoke. liable. And, and and the judge ruled in their favor. Yeah. So then it, it kind of got out of hand. I think there was a, a case that they did lose, and uh, it was paid off. And then what happened was uh, then I think the tobacco industry says, we're just going to be barraged with uh, lawsuits after this. Mm. What are we going to do? We have to keep the industry going because it's a good industry. We hire a lot of people and everything. Right. So um, they said... Uh, so they, they, that's why uh, you talk about cigarette ads. There's mm -hmm. no more cigarette ads. There's yeah. no more billboards. There's no mm -hmm. more magazine ads. Mm -hmm. Because even when they took off uh, cigarette ads in, I think, 1968 or 69, or maybe it was 970, like New Year's Day, 97. I remember it was the last football game. They were just yeah. running them. They were running every, getting every last uh, Winston and Kent and <laughs> Paul Mel ad uh, right through it. They, uh, what happened was they... Uh, they uh, uh, they start advertising everywhere else, billboards at right, ball, right, ballparks. Right, I mean, yeah, you don't see a Joe Camel, no more Joe no, Camel, no, no more Camel. the cool penguin, mm -hmm. all that stuff. You know, yeah. they're basically trying to get kids to smoke by having these cute animals. Cute animals, <laughs> yes. Kids smoke. <laughs> so the so the, the the give and take now is the cigarette companies won't advertise, mm -hmm. but you can't sue them. Can't sue. Yeah, at least from once that was uh, that was about ten years ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, now it's almost like kids are vaping, so it's almost like the kids are starting to smoke by vape. Yeah, yeah. 
And a lot of people think that that's safer because there's no cars and nicotine. Uh, but there, but yeah. the nicotine, I think, is still there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all it's just a and uh, oh man, if you if you you talk talk about a sewer of oh of of, of controversy and oh, and and, and and uh, mendacity. <laughs> Check anything having to do with the cigarette companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll find stuff like um, yep. there was a movie uh, based on a 60 Minutes, a guy that was uh, on 60 Minutes uh, called the intru uh, the the interrogator mm -hmm. or something. I forget what it was called, but it had uh, oh. Russell Crowe in it, oh, and okay. he, and and he was the chemist who found who figured out that nicotine was was uh, that nicotine comes naturally in cigarettes. But they were actually upping it into the tobacco, ah, making it basically a okay. nicotine charge right. thing. Yeah, I don't All remember right. what the name of the movie is called. Al Pacino was in it too. And then 60 Minutes were going to run something about it, and then, and then, then CBS came through because we're trying to get a deal with the <laughs> with our R. J. Reynolds or something, and mm -hmm. and we are or Brown and Williamson, and we are, we are nixing that that episode, and and 60 Minutes people were so what. Whoa. We worked all that hard for it. Yeah, what? And they not only did they had to mix it, they had to like Mike Wallace had to go on there and say, "And we're doing this where we know." And then, and then, and then you knew that you couldn't believe, you know, sixty minutes. If you remember sixty minutes, it's not one of those shows that that likes to give apologies. No, no, it does not. <laughs> sixty minutes don't care. Sixty minutes. Well, they're tough, care. you know. Yeah, they're, I don't they're know how tough, tough yeah, they are now, yeah. but I mean, when Mike Wallace was there. <laughs> Is this your underwear? <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> I remember uh, there was a there was a I, I remember doing a skit once where uh, uh -huh. no it was a phone it was a phone message where I was doing I was doing an invitation of Mike Wallace I was doing a better yeah and I I remember and now I'm going to wish someone a happy birthday he goes come back here come back here no I'm not I'm not I'm not here to send you to jail <laughs> I'm here to wish you a happy birthday. <laughs> You see Mike Wallace coming. Oh God! Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> We're in trouble. <laughs> Mike <laughs> Wallace is here. It, it's almost that um, now these days. Zoom chat for you. It's like the deep sea of hell. Oh, I could sell it. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like the Grim Reaper of, yeah. uh, of weather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the snow miser. <laughs> well, he's like no, he's like that uh, superhero, uh, that storm or something from the X. -Men. Yes, yes. <laughs> you're you're X -Men. caught up in the yeah. weather. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's trouble. Yeah, at <laughs> least at least storm is pretty. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Hallie. Yeah, Hallie yeah. Berry, yeah. and uh, I forgot the other person in the X Men. They uh, they they made X Men and they changed all the people. Yeah, all the yeah. actors. I mean, why? Yeah, why? I can't. I can't. I don't understand. How you're watching superheroes and all of a sudden they change like Spider Man. There's like four Spider Man. Yeah, there are four so Spider Man. It's like, hey, uh, Toby, no, uh, Cliff, yeah, uh, Joe, uh, so many Superman, yeah, so many Superman, Superman. They're all flying in the air. It's like, uh, it just doesn't put my like, so like Batman <laughs> when they make the Batman movies. Yes. You know, all that it doesn't really matter what actor plays Batman because yeah. you're really only casting this part of <laughs> 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 That's all we need. It's like, excuse me, sir, let me just see your jaw. <laughs> yeah. George Clooney or yeah, George the last Clooney. Movie, uh, uh, before they it took a while and then they started putting uh, 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 they uh, Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale. You know what? Englishman playing Batman. They have Englishman playing Superman recently. They have yeah, an Englishman yeah. playing Spider Man. What's going on here? I know. The English are taking over. Why aren't we importing our superheroes? <laughs> and the only one who is spot on is uh, Professor Xavier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have uh, uh, James McElroy. Mm -hmm. James McElroy. And, yeah. and it, but it used to be uh, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart, yes. And he was great. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. He was awesome. I mean, he was perfect. And the Magneto guy is very good. Ian McKellen. Yeah, Ian McKellen. I should yeah. say Sir Ian McKellen. Sir uh, Patrick Stewart. Too. Oh, that's yeah. right. He did get knighted. Didn't Not he? only is he knighted, he's a uh, American citizen. What? Yeah. Very, uh, he, what happens is certain actors became American citizens or after they were knighted, because if you uh -huh. become American citizens before you're knighted, you probably won't get knighted. Oh. <laughs> so Anthony Hopkins <laughs> became American citizen uh -huh. and uh, Patrick Stewart. And I think. Salman Rushdie, the guy 
the Ridley Command character. Oh, yeah. He's Sir yes. Salman Rushdie, but I heard him on a news show recently that said he's American. So please welcome aboard. Well, welcome aboard. <laughs> I don't know why, but anyway. Speaker, speaker of the... <laughs> against censorship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I did not know Patrick Stewart was knighted. Yeah. Um... Oh, he's a very good actor. Patrick. Oh, love him. Because... I mean, people know him from Star Trek. Yes. But he was, I mean, you see him doing shape. He actually, every, for the longest time, he would, wherever town he was in, like Los Angeles or New York mm -hmm. or London, when he was, uh, during the Christmas season, he, he's been married a few times, so he could have been in any oh. of those places. <laughs> he, he would book a, a theater. And he would do a one man mm -hmm. uh, Christmas carol and do all the parts. All and, it's, the parts. and I saw like clips of it on, on TV. It was God, amazing man. how he could do all that. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. he could pull it off. I'll tell you the one truth. man show. But you know what's really funny? His fa my favorites are uh, the time when he does American Dad. And oh, yeah. He plays uh, Bullock. Yeah. <laughs> he plays the, uh, the, the, the boss. Yeah, yeah. The, the CIA boss. And he looks like. Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Bald Speaking of bald heads, I mean, I don't like to make fun of people with bald heads. Well, look I'm at me. Yeah, look at yeah. I, I just, I it. just got scalped. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, <laughs> my favorite hair color, me. <laughs> no, but I, I know it's you know I'm getting older, so we're, we're, but um, what's really sad about Star Trek mm -hmm. is that I don't know, take place 500 years in the future. Yeah. No cure for baldness. Wow. <laughs> You think by then they would have figured out something? Yeah. <laughs> it's like they, they only care about their space missions. <laughs> and it's like, we have no cure for baldness just yet, but we'll go to the far ends of the galaxy. Yeah. All right. And uh, we'll do it at the start. Who cares? 